uh, Vera Davis de Sousa. Uh, Minister, thank you. Thank you. Are you expecting to have to, I, I say restructure, but reformulate the debt burden? Because debts that you took on during the pandemic, with high, particularly foreign currency debts, at higher interest rates are now unsustainable. Uh, we already did our work, hard work, during the pandemic and after the pandemic, uh, talking with our main partners and creditors, and we managed to, uh, during some time, have some breathing space to face the challenges. And what we are doing now is a proactive uh, asset management, uh, liability management, where we are, in some case, buying back such short-term debt and putting more time on the debt we are issuing in the local market. Because the plans that you put in place for the pandemic debt have got much worse as a result of these higher interest rates. Are you finding yourself effectively locked out of markets and will have to turn to, uh, to, 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 to the international um, organizations? The circumstances help us to deal with it because now we are seeing our GDP growing we are seeing a more strong Kwanzaa that help us with the date denominated in dollars. And we are seeing also the oil price coming up. These three factors together help us to navigate and manage more in a more serene way the process of buying back and going to the market uh, seeking more uh, lower costs. This question of, of greater I'm looking at the, 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 the numbers there for your economic growth for this year and next. Um, they look good numbers, but the reality, of course, is you should be growing faster. You know, you're, you're a country that normally grows faster. Do, is the return or increase of oil and gas, does this pose promise to be helpful to you? Particularly, of course, as Europe requires more and you have it, you can provide it. Uh, we, we are working to at least stabilize the oil production and we have also big projects uh, come, will, that will come on gas, but we are putting a lot of effort and energy on the non-oil sector. Agri, business, fisheries, e tourism will be our focus for the next years. What do you need now? What is the one thing that you need most besides breathing space? <laughs> Knowledge knowledge. We need to put a lot of efforts for capacity building, uh, energy to education, to have our people uh, being part of the process of building the country. So money is not enough. We need the people being educated, well educated, uh, with capacity to push together with us the process of making the, the, the country grow. I was looking uh, online um, uh, uh, at, at Angola's position in relation to Transparency International. And you've done, over the last five years, an impressive job Thank of you. coming up, the, but you're, you're still way down. Yes. <laughs> you're still way working. down. So what, what's going to be the key that unlocks that, uh, whether it be the corruption, whether it be the, uh, the difficulty, the bureaucracy? I know that you're, you're committed to it, but, but what, what, what's your ability to do it? Uh, we, we are working in so many fronts. We, at the oil sector, we join at ATI. Mm -hmm. uh, at the fiscal sector, we are now disclosing the terms of the contracts that we have on the debt. Uh, for the uh, fiscal figures, we are disclosing our projections for the long, medium long term. Regarding privatization, we are publishing the numbers, the revenues that we are getting from the assets that we are selling. Everything is at our website. But today, for example, the Nigerian minister was saying how there needs to be greater trade, free trade. There needs to be more initiatives. I've heard this before with Africa. <laughs> I've heard it before and it never happens. Everybody talks about it, but protectionism comes in. And not only does protectionism come in, it's probably going to get worse as a result of everybody protecting their own market. This must really frustrate you. Yes, but we need to uh, be quite sure that we will move faster if we open ourselves to, oh, to the market. Oh, I don't doubt it. How do you do it? Yeah. First, with infrastructures, we need roads to inter railways to interconnect our countries. We need to make sure that the urban mobility is not an issue, uh, just to, to make it easy to flow people and capital. Without that, it will remain only words. The managing director, finally, the managing director said to me today in, a, in our interview, she said what was most needed was more women in decision-making 
roles. Now, Africa has a very enviable record these days of people like yourself moving into decision-making roles, but there needs to be more of them. You agree? <laughs> Angola is a good exception. Our vice president is a woman. Our speaker that the parliament is a woman. I'm the minister of finance. I, I'm a woman. And we have much more in Angola. So I, I hope, I, I'm happy to say that we are a good exception. Good to see you, Minister. Thank, Thank you, you so much Thank for talking you. to us. Thank you very much.